Hi guys, can you see? Can you hear me? Oh, I forgot to mute this microphone. Well, yeah, take into consideration it's my first time in Twitch, so it might be a little bit rough in the beginning, but we'll see how this goes. So, first of all, hi. I hope you can hear even the music. Uh, the first question is the music may be too loud. I hope he wants some to look himself. Well, let's see. If I'm very unlucky with the rules, maybe you're gonna seek to. Uh, Okay, sounds fine to me. Okay, if it's needed, I can maybe lower the, the music volume in the mixer. Cool. Are ready for this? So, what we're gonna do here, uh, you know that the game can be played in a different, like, difficulty setting. One of the setting is like, like a normal setting, like a default tactical game. But you can use the sliders, actually you don't need to use the sliders, and then it can be like a very easy, like a, like a survival horror game, and we're gonna play that. Also, it's just gonna be one explorer, and that's it, one player, me. And I'm not gonna use weapons at all, so that's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, we have our map tab here, and I'm gonna change the view very soon, I just wanna say hello first, Thanks for all the backers, thanks for view, all the viewers, and uh, let's get on with it. So, uh, just in a minute or so, I will uh, pause the stream, change back to please stand by, uh, change the view of the camera, and then we are going to shuffle all the decks, because uh, you're gonna see that there's no randomness involved, I didn't uh, you know, set up the game, everything is gonna be as expected. But the downside for that is that, <laughs> you know, I can't uh, know how the game will go. It might be that I might just die in a couple of rounds. Hopefully it's not gonna come to that, but let's see what happens, huh? See ya. Let's see. First of all, we have our monster deck right here. So we're gonna shuffle that, hopefully. We're gonna see what comes first. And then there are our explorer lens. These are like the good things that happen in the game. I might read that stuff and maybe change uh, as I read, because it's all written as we, as a team. But considering that I am the, the only player, I might just use I when I read stuff. So these are horror events. These are like bad things that happen. Hopefully we're not gonna see a lot of these. Some artifacts. Some consumables. And apparel. I'm not even going to touch the weapon. No, because when you gain item, 
you can uh, choose are you going to use the one of the item decks and plus your explorer class considering that i'll be playing with Lorai, she's right there uh, she has an artifact as her like a main item deck will this be like an adventure or a go fight and die. <laughs> so let's see. I really hope it's gonna be like an adventure, but let's see. Uh, what else? So that's the map tile. That's the entry token right there. These are my friends. Some tokens. The player board. You see the stamina, health, and essence. And this is the chapter board. We're just going to play three chapters, or less if we die. Uh, this is the monster threat and the monster level. I really don't think that we're going to see monster level 2 in this session, but let's see. Okay, let's start the game. I'll position Laura here, just adjacent to the explored vent. Six stamina. Let's start, huh? Okay, for three stamina. I will activate the event space and something good will happen. I gain one essence. Glow of competence. You can see the card. Something resembling a lever pointed out of the wall at me and the recklessness of survival decided that I would test our luck once more. Instantly upon activation, a glare blazed through the passage, and pleasant sensations of inner strength and com competence filled my mind. Increased explorers attack rolls by one. So this is like an ongoing effect. I might even put on the map tiles things that are like ongoing, so that you can see that there's some stuff that can affect the game. Just give me a second. It's easier to sit on a chair. Okay, so let's start. Three stamina. One, two, three. And that's it. So that's it for my first turn. Can you show the card again? Sure. Yeah, the problem is that I'm not going to be able to see. Let me check. Uh, This is actually not the best option because the next explorer event is going to override that. So this is much better afterwards. But as I said, I'm not going to play like some, you know, warrior. Let's see. Now it's a monster roll. Hopefully, it's not going to be a first fail. <sighs> Come on, really? It's a nine. Uh, and it's a Cthulhu. Oh my god, this is the. Actually, this is one of the worst possible options that could happen. See? Because this guy is immobile. And he's gonna affect the whole map tile. So in order to hit him, it's almost impossible to do that because he has armor 4 and will 3. Let's see, if I have one increased by this explore event and I have one essence here, so that's 2. And I have an arcane attack. That's at least three or four. Hmm. So there are two options that I can never see. Run, exactly. <laughs> That's one option. Run. The second option would be to try to kill him. But it's still master uh, spawn phase. So after we roll for this, let's roll for a horror event. One. Finally. Okay. At least some break of luck. 
now it's his turn. So there are no wounded monster on the map tile. And he's gonna attack Explorer. And yeah, it's gonna damage me. Yeah, three. I have. Uh, it's an arcane tech. I have three. That's enough. I'm already on three hit points. <clears throat> hmm. Shall I try? Okay. You know what? I'll run. You know, sometimes it's an it's an option to just run away. One, two stamina to open the map tile. And one, two, one, two. For one stamina, I will use and activate the recharge station. And let's roll recharge die. Two stamina, so I have two stamina back. Now, I will position myself like this. And that's it. That's it for the whole round. So let's go again. Ktoon. Before Ktoon, yeah, let's roll for a monster spawn. Ah, there's not gonna be a monster. Yeah, okay, six. Close enough. Because seven and higher, it's just gonna be a new monster. Sort of like a stamina pool in Diablo, yeah, in a way. Yeah, you can call it like that. And then for core, one. Cool, perfect. So now, I might activate the chest for three stamina. I will get one essence. I will take a artifact and an apparel. Let's see with an apparel. Mm, not bad. So first one is a rota part. That's not very useful. Because game one item to any explorer, like uh, I'm solo, so this is not very useful. And the second one, it's an augment that you put on the apparel, like on a torso item, and you can destroy that to restore one health. But both of those items are not very good, but the cravat is better. And I'll just remove. Kill the rotopod, destroy it like this. For three remaining stamina, let's use and activate the event space. So unfortunately, this increased attack rolls by one is gonna be destroyed. Cleansing ritual. Hmm. For the solo mode, you keep in items which are designed for two plus. Well, actually, that's a good point. You know, you could maybe go and filter uh, through the decks and remove stuff that's unneeded. One thing to note is this: this rotopod is gonna have an increase of will. So even though you are not gonna use that ability, it increases your will by one. So it's not technically totally useless. Let's go back to our cleansing ritual. So plus one essence. Now is the time to test this rusty contraption. It seems it could be used to destroy the dreaded places whence those denizens of evil issue forth into our fragile realm. Well, let us give it a try. Destroy any spawn space. So that's very good, very good. So we're gonna destroy this one because you can only target stuff in your map tile. Usually when a monster spawn, you will use the nearest spawn space. And every map tile has two spawn spaces, so this is the second one. So when the new monster spawns, it's gonna go here, a little bit well, distant to me. So that's it for my round. Let's see for the spawn phase. Six, again, we're okay. Nine. So that's the horror, and we increase the monster threat. Let's see what happens. 
caustic fog. Ah, not good. Don't read it. So many steps and so many failed attempts. I'm exhausted and my feet drags behind me, willing me to lie down and rest a little. But I must go on, I must. But why? Every moment feels, feels like an absurd game, serving only to waste time. Why am I struggling? Is there any point to this charade? Reduce explorers max stamina by one. So that means uh, the next turn I'll be at five. That's not good. Okay, what I'm going to do next on my turn is again one, two, three. Just use event space. One more essence. You know why I'm doing this? Uh, should Master Track go down if you succeed roll? Oh no, no. If I succeed a roll, yeah, yeah, you mean this slide? Yeah, but we are calling, uh, exactly, it's an easy mode, so it would be a, a bit hard. So I'm doing this and I'm collecting essence just in order to go and kick this tune. I don't like this guy. So with two remaining, oh no, I didn't uh, put this. Revised tactics. Revised tactics. Our first encounters proved disastrous. They were stronger, faster, and had dire sorcery on their side. I survived, but barely. So I considered how we engage these monsters. I devised plans, gathered my colleagues, and relayed to them my new stratagems. I implored them to follow me explicitly if they saw any chance of survival. So this is also an ongoing effect and says when Explorer is hit, it moves up to one space. So I'm gonna put it like this there. And now let's go back to Ktoon. One, two. <clears throat> okay, now let's see for the new monster. Nine, yeah, there's a new monster. This little beauty. It's a Yadithia. So when this monster is the only monster, it is ethereal. And it's going to be ethereal. Focus, come on, focus. That's no, okay. It's gonna be here. He has one health. And he is right there. Then for a horror event, nothing happens. First Ktoon, he can't do anything. And then Yedithian. He has five stamina. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Now it's my turn. Even if I tried to, I can't target. But is that blank across the pit count to this one tile? Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a uh, uh, ask away. So this guy is now ethereal, so I can't even target him. I might be able to close the door right there, but I want to use most of my turn. So let's just try and kill this guy. The problem is that I have now five stamina. So it's like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, monster spawn, four. Okay, we're good. Horror, eight. Oh, bad. So, caustic fog. Actually, that's a good thing because there's not gonna be decreasing my stamina anymore. Haunted floor, trigger traps. The floor became a blur, 
and the patterns etched on the stones moved around whimsically, forcing me to grab hold of the wall for support. So faint and confused did the view make me. The next instant, spikes erupted from the ground, dark and menacing, ready to impale anything so unfortunate as to be standing above them. So this just happens, trigger traps. No one is standing on the trapped spaces, so it doesn't have any effect. Okay, now Ktoon is gonna attack me. Oh, I'm on two health already. <laughs> okay, now you're Dithya. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I'm just surrounded with monsters. If I attack Ktoon and kill him, also take note that I don't have any items and I will be able to kill him. But if I kill him, Yadithian is going to be ethereal because if you know his ability, let me check it. This monster is the only monster it is ethereal. So the best course of action would be to kill Yadithian, of course. My hero, Lore, has just one white die. And I'm gonna use that. So two stamina. One. Huh. One. He has will of four, so I need to use three essence in order to kill him. That's very unfortunate. But one, two, three. So he is dead. What does it mean when he becomes ethereal? Well, look at it like some kind of invisibility. You cannot target him directly. So you can target him, for example, if he's standing on the trap spaces and you activate the trap, or there is an exploding barrel right there. So if you hit the exploding barrel and it explodes, you will damage it, of course. One more thing about ethereals, they can move through units. To recommend to play solo as easy mode, is it the final map version? Well, you know, maybe it's about the camera and everything, I'm sure you will. When you look at it, it's very distinct. So if you can at least see details while streaming, then rest assured you will have a very easy way of distinguishing the, the map spaces. Play still as in easy mode, well, it really depends on um, what you're after. Like, I now just want to cruise a little bit through the game and not try to maximize and optimize every every step of the way. So it's, it's a little bit more relaxed game. So where were we? Uh, killing this guy, okay, he's done. I get one essence back and when he dies, attacker gains item. So I will use this. I will use this for consumable and artifacts. Let's see. Corporeal vernier. That's an artifact. You may gain item instead of invoking explore event and you may restore health instead of restoring essence that's an interesting thing ancient puzzle box so for three stamina i can choose to restore essence gain item or invoke explore event hmm. you know what i will go with an ancient puzzle box. And this one will be destroyed. Hmm. I have four stamina and two essence. He's got will of three. You know what? Let's try to kill him. 
So for one, two, come on. I need a two, perfect. So two and one from Essence. And it hits his Will of Three. And just when the music dies, he's off the board. I gain another Essence. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Let's try to finish this chapter, shall we? So with two remaining stamina. One, two. Now, you see, I'm just standing next to the spawn space. That's not a very good and smart thing to do. Uh, you have to have an ethereal weapon to damage it. Exactly, yeah. There's a lot of artifacts and even weapons that can allow you to do that. Now let's roll for a spawn phase. Oh. Ah. Seven. That's not good. Just when I wanted to have a breather, another monster appeared. Okay. It's here. Now for horror phase, seven. So this deep one is a tricky little bastard. So when he enters the game, increased monster threat, maybe we are gonna see a monster level too. Uh, besides his attack, when he hits, then he can increase the monster threat as well. Do you lose all collected items when you go to next chapter? Oh no, no. You lose items only when you die, but then you lose your body and you're out of the game. So no, you don't lose items. It's not like a campaign of sorts, it's more like a scenario. And uh, you, you should progress through the chapters with all of your items. Sorry. Okay, so now let's go with the horror event. Invigorating Reprisal. So, it's just restore well one health to monsters. I'm not gonna read that because it doesn't have any juicy effect because all of our monsters are, are already at full health. Come on. But, and that's a bad thing, he's gonna attack me. He has 5 stamina and his attack is two stamina. So that's that's gonna hurt. I'm at two health by the way. If I didn't have any essence I would probably die. So that's four. I'm on one health. Oh come on. And I roll for a game die to see if I increase the monster threat. I do. Oh and one more attack, five. Yeah, I'm one essence down because I'm at one health. And let's see if we increase the monster threat. No, five. So right now I'm at one health and one essence. What are possible ways of healing? Well, there are a few. If you can see, Lorai has the ability to heal, not just herself, but her allies as well. Just for one essence, restore one health to an explorer. So that's a very cool thing. That's, that's one of the reasons why I play with her. So besides that, you have uh, these like recharge stations. You know, I used this one before. I rolled for stamina, but there's a chance that I could get health as well. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ignore him. Maybe he's just gonna, you know, do his own thing, just ignore me. But before we do that, six stamina. So for two stamina, so one and two, let's close the door just next to him. Goodbye. For one stamina, I need health, I really need. I'm gonna activate that recharge station. 
Let's see. Actually, even a stamina would be would be a good solution. Okay, so one health. I need two health. So for three stamina. I have a couple of options. One way is to go around here, all the way to the chapter space. If I do it like this, then I will pass through the monster space, spawn, spawn phase, sorry. This is gonna be very, very dangerous. So I will go directly here. So one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's it for my turn. Okay, spawn phase. This is unbelievable. A new monster. This one with two health. This is actually the most cutest monster. Not a very a big baddie, but he is very interesting because you see it seemed shy at first before we learned its true intentions when you hit him he moves back towards spawn space and when he just comes into play you move him towards the explorer two spaces but you see his uh, armor and will are just two and two okay now for horror phase Three. Okay, we're good. So first, Buapoth, I'm gonna put it right here. But he moves two spaces towards me, so he's gonna be here. Now, Deep One. Deep One has five stamina. And for four stamina, he destroys the door. Wow. He has one remaining stamina, and he rushes like this now it's Puapoth he has five stamina and he just tries to go closest to me so he can go even diagonal one two three four he's next to me he can't attack because his attack is two stamina and he's stuck right there now it's my turn <laughs> Now, I might try and risk a little bit. Hopefully, no monster will appear this round. If it does, I don't know, <laughs> I might die. Let's try to do this. For two stamina, one, two. Let's close another door. With these doors are literally saving my ass right now with one more stamina I move and with three stamina one two three I will activate the chapter uh, not the chapter the event space I need good things I really need good health Whew. this is a good thing finally a break of luck. So Arcane Guardian. My memories draw me unwillingly back to that night in the forest. The mystical scroll I hold now was salvaged from that terrible place. Spatters of blood from the ritual still mark its yellowing surface. The incantation on this parchment can apparently be used to render someone invisible for a short duration. I'm not sure if it's true, but it's not worth a try. My voice spiraled into the void as I repeated the words, searching for my target. To my amazement, I saw, or rather didn't see, that it had worked. So it arcane attacks monsters with three white die. Ah, finally. So I have four. So it's an arcane, so I check will, L, and all of their wills are below 4. So Buopoth is gonna be damaged with 1, and Deep 1. So Buopoth goes towards A, and Deep 1 dies. Let's see. 
I gained one essence because I killed the monster. Okay, so that's it. That's it from my run. That actually gave me some hope. Okay, next round. Let's see for a new monster. Ten. Ah, no break, no break. Saral enters play and he's gonna be here. One, two, three, four, five, one blah, blah, blah. Like this. And let's see for a horror phase. Three. Nothing happens. Cool. So first blue one. One, two, and just enough that he can't destroy the door. So I have one more round, hopefully, behind the closed doors. But Sarok comes. One, two, three. Four. Now both of them are just like hitting on the door. I can hear the commotion. No, no, no. Uh, easy mode is uh, with not using the sliders. Uh, easier mode is with uh, having zero as a zero. But it's not easy and easier. So I will use zero as a ten. And you see, it's not going to be a problem. So I have three. <laughs> you know, I'm not thinking. I can go to the next chapter right away. The one problem with that is that I would be with just one, uh, just two health and zero essence. Hmm. Okay, let's do that. One, two, three. Let's go to the next chapter. One, two, three. So I will activate the chapter space and voila, we are to the next chapter. Trail of Blood. Yeah, I'm gonna read, why not? But first, just to check the abilities of that current chapter. You see this icon over there, so that means that I can't just activate the chapter to go to the next one. I need to somehow find a way to go to the next chapter. And you can see in this ability, it tells me how to go to the next chapter. So I will need to four times sacrifice one health. But I can also use any time this ability to sacrifice one health to move up to three spaces. And in the beginning, each explorer moves up to two spaces. So that means I move now. I will move right there. Also, six. So that means it's going to be <laughs> the monster uh, have a 10% chance, even increased chance than before, to spawn. So that's not good. So I will put this on six. Okay, for three stamina, I will activate the event space. Okay, one essence is there. Let's see what happens. Oh, good. A cleansing light. Since the game is significantly easier with each additional layer. Uh, what, do mean, what do you mean by a layer? Additional layer. Respond and while you do that, I'm gonna read a very good thing that just happened. Previous sojourners to this place must have attempted a ritual to purge a small section of this abyssal labyrinth. We found upon the floor icons of faith drawn in faded chalk. Broken white candles lay nearby, along with long snuffed incense of spring flowers. Whatever those unknown shamans or clergy attempted, some residual of their good deeds remained. We instantly felt revitalized, freed for a moment of all doubts and injuries. Recharge two times. Well, player, well, hmm. it depends, you know, because every on every spawn phase you will roll for each player. So uh, the game scales as there are more players involved. 
So it's a good balance and you will see that, sure, it's going to be much easier to organize if there are a few of you. But then again, you will see much more monsters. So one, two stamina. Once more, two stamina. And <clears throat> why not activate recharge station once more? One help. Okay, so I could die now because I'm going to do something uh, a little bit risky. I have four stamina. One, two, three, four. If they destroy this door, and they will, and they block this way, and new monster spawns here, and it blocks this way, then you can imagine <laughs> my predicament. Well, let's see what happens now. So that's it. I used all that stamina. So first, let's see if I will possibly die. Four. Yes, I'm alive. Now for four phase, six. Yeah. Now let's see. Abominable blast. Hmm. Uh, did you reduce stamina for acting the rituals after resolving the event? Actually, that's a good point. I think not. So, uh, good, good eyesight. Thanks for that. You bastard. <laughs> so let me read the abominable blast. The beast seemed to listen to the air around them as it was giving them instructions. The abominable glow started to emanate from their appendages and the rage from even the distant ones seemed the closest ever. So you can see that there is a card. I <laughs> know it's fine. It's even better. It's uh, interesting. Uh, you see this ability. So it has a range of 3 and stamina of 3 and attack 2. So all the monsters have that. So if Saral, for example, and Guopo, they are melee, but with this one, they become ranged. Now, first Guopo. He has 5 stamina. Boom. 4 stamina to destroy the door. And with 1 stamina, he comes here. So a good thing that Guopo just did now, he blocked the way to Saral. You see that this is much faster way and Saral is not going to be some kind of a smart guy and okay, Bopov is going to block with here and I'm going to you know, do here and then uh, we're going to flank the guy. No, he just, he's just going to wait in line and that's it. He's not going to do anything because he can't push through. If it would be ethereal, then he could do that. So that's it. Now it's my turn. If Buopoth comes here one, two, he can attack me just once. Okay, I'll give him that. So I'm gonna risk one more turn and just stay here. And uh, the same thing applies if something comes from this one, I'll be in a very bad tight position. So, three stamina. Let's activate the chest. Like so. A peril and artifact. So, artifact. Oh, that's good. So, this is a ritual cloak. Uh, your attacks are arcane, well, I don't care too much about attacks, but it gives me two will, that's a good thing. And this one is a harmonic, har harmonic purigen. So it just gives me one, it's an artifact, and I can activate with two stamina. If I have it equipped, I unequip it to restore one health. Does the player decide which monster moves first? It's, yeah, it's a rule. It's, it's a queue. So Buopov uh, came first, so he's gonna be the first to play. The new monster is gonna spawn here in the monster queue. 
I will use the ritual cloak. Hmm, will I? Yeah. It's still unequipped. And this harmonic virgin I'm just gonna destroy. Now with three remaining stamina, let's activate the workbench. Let's see. One, two. Let's go with consumable. Three. Okay, so how this works. I took three cards from any item decks. Now I check them. So we have a burst mail. So this looks interesting. We have a funicular grappler for pushing and pu pulling. This is interesting, especially because we are next to a pit. So we could maybe use that. And Fulginius Flask. See, this is actually what I've been searching for. So this could uh, help me escape. So you can see that that's a consumable. It has that icon and you can see this icon right there. And for, let's try to put it into focus, for one stamina, I can target an adjacent unit or myself and just destroy, shatter this flask. And that target or myself is, if I targeted myself, is ethereal this round. And additionally, Explorers can even target ethereal units this round. So even if in the case that two uh, monsters are flanking me on each side, I could just crash the, the flask on myself, become ethereal, and just loop, try to run away. So let's see, we have three of those items in my inventory, and three of the items from the workbench. So first step is to maybe change swap some of the items from my inventory from those ones. I don't like too much this cravat. I mean, it's okay, but... I'm gonna swap this like that. And that's it. Then we have burst mail or ritual cloak, which is better. Let's go with the ritual cloak, like I am some kind of a mystic, so let's role play like that. And this one is push one space and pull one space. That can be very useful in some situations, like to push or pull to, to anything. Like one example is the lever that I told you before to impale units. If you push a unit into a lever, it will activate. If you push a unit into a barrel, it will also explode. Of course, if you push or pull a unit into a pit, it's destroyed. So I will take this item. So that's the final step. Not, no, not completely final, that's not true. Final step be between choosing the cards. And now the final step of the workbench is to use inventory. I will destroy both of those items. So that means this is finally equipped. This. And I have two consumables like this. I hope you can see that. Okay, this is looking pretty good. And we are on the second chapter. The only thing that's concerning at this point is the monster threat. It's quite high. Now the spawn phase. 10. Of course, of course. So let's see which spawn point. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the same spawn distance. So I get to choose. Of course, I'm going to choose the top one. Moon Beast. So he has an attack. He can pull two spaces. And when he's next to a wall, he's ethereal. One health. He's there. Horror event. Four, and it is a four. So, monster threat. Let's see what happens. Broken item. 
Not too bad. Not, not too good. These holes have an inexplicable way of imbuing the very air we breathe with pessimism. And it obstructs every step we take in here. Sometimes you need to lie back and allow the karma to take you. But what if it only flows towards certain oblivion? Destroy top item card from each item deck. Let's see what we have destroyed. For weapon, hunting scope, oh, we don't care about this. Analeptic kit, oh, that's awesome consumable. You can see it gives me a lot of options. So either to restore health, stamina or essence. Oh, into the trash it goes. Reflexive sextant, that's also very good. And the barrel, leather holster, it doesn't matter. Okay, now the monsters. First, blue both. One, two, and he attacks once. Five. I am on two health. Okay, now Seral. One, two, and that's it. Now Moon Beast. One, two. Okay, one, two. Now let's see. One, two, three. Four. Now this is much faster. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now it's my turn. So you see that all of them are standing on the trapped spaces. So I guess you know what's the next step now. So six stamina. But the problem is. I would really want them to stay in those trapped spaces. Let me check something. If I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Blopov will go towards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. Now Blopov will not move. Saral will not move, but Moonbeast will. And he's gonna even pull me. Uh, let's see, it's not a problem. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> I'm done. New monster? No, no. Okay, four. Four, nine, yes. Overrun, repeat spawn phase. Mm. Uh, let's just roll one. Cool. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Now let's see for blue output. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Saral would need to go here and he can't because of the moon beast but moon beast will one two three and he can then use because it's a range three two stamina that's five stamina and he pulls me two spaces but okay okay not bad then it's my turn for two stamina, I will activate the trap. When you activate trap, you get the three die and you roll it. So this is five, so all of them get one damage. Bulbuth, he's gonna die like this. Fun. I gain one essence. Saral. Is gonna get hit and moon beast he is not standing on a trap space so here's one can you push moon beast into pit yes i can yeah but one thing so you see the time like orthogonal so if i push him he will go right there in order to push him into a pit i would need to stand like that and then push him towards the pit that's a good call, call. i think i'll do that uh, now, that was for two stamina. Can I do that? How much is it? It's 
3 stamina. Oh, it's perfectly fine. So, 1 stamina here. And 3 stamina. And push 1 space. Boom. He's dead. So Moon Beast is destroyed and one essence is restored. So now let me check you something. Uh, so our main thing, our main goal is to uh, four times sacrifice one hell and then you're just gonna go to the next chapter. And remember the next chapter is the last chapter. So let's try this. Okay. I am on two health, but I have three essence. It's a very good position. Actually, you know what? I will wait for, for my round because if I use all of that essence and some bad it comes right there, I'll die. Will I take a risk? No, no, I won't. <laughs> okay. Spawn phase four. It's fine. Then, horror phase, it's two, it's fine. And now Sorrel, one, two, three, that's it. He came next to me, but he can't attack. Now, he's positioned diagonally from me, and I could use again the push mechanic to push him back to the, to the pits where he belongs. I will do that, yeah. I will. So three stamina, one, two, three. And he's into the pit. Like this. For three remaining stamina. One, two, three. Now, let's try and use one essence to remove, uh, restore one health. Then, to use the chapter's ability to sacrifice one health, then I will use an explore token. I'm on two health. One more. I'm on one health. Two tokens. And two essence more. So two health and two health down. So we have finally we have four of those explore tokens and we can go to the to the next chapter, to the last one. Uh, so that's the number five. One, two, three, four, ah, four, sorry. Six and five are the numbers. And it's a missing piece. So, yeah, of course, uh, so this is like the last one. Oh, actually, it's going to be over in the next round. For missing piece, the corridors were dank and threatening, but I tried to ignore the rising suspense while I wound our way past the softly throbbing walls. Halfway through such a passage, I stumbled upon a piece of parchment and I guessed that this was a missing page from the journal. I squinted in the gloom to make sense of the illustration, a blue meteor plummeting from the heavens toward a glittering white mountain. It felt my gorge rise as I absorbed the extent of what I was seeing, were the small tentacles protruding from the blazing sphere just an artist's fanciful depiction? Was it, could it be, that it was alive? The diary also spoke of a secret place far below and gave me detailed instructions on how to reach it from the entrance. But it would have to wait. Time was running short and we had to return to base before nightfall. As an uh, ability, when this chapter is played, place exit token. Um, so I will place it, of course, just here, next to me. So the only thing that I need to do now is survive. I am on one health and one essence. That's that's actually perfect. 
now that's uh, that's it for me. Do I have three more stamina? Strangely. Let's say that I don't have. I think I used it somewhere. But it's fine. Let's see for the last monster. Ten. Yep. Yucky. He is right over here. Horror phase two, nothing happens. And if you can see, we are on our last position right there. Uh, you can't see it, but that's the last one. So if there is just one more, we would increase the monster level and I would need to shuffle monster level twos. And they're, believe me, much harder. Bjarke will try to come next to me, but he is not going to reach me. I will wind two move here, and with two more stamina, to them. I am alive, and I am victorious on one health and one stamina. That's it. So, that's it. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, now it's time for, uh, for a QA, of course. Are there any questions about the game or anything, some kind of a mechanic? Thanks, appreciate that. It was a bit easy, although we had a lot of monsters, but that's the thing. You can play it like some kind of horror adventures. And bear in mind, I didn't use any weapons. I'm using uh, tea. English breakfast. <laughs> I don't drink coffee. Okay guys, so that's it. If uh, we might even do some kind of a Steam, not Steam, sorry, stream uh, Twitch playthroughs in the future, maybe with more players and uh, to show you a little bit more like harder game, hopefully even some dead explorers. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this chapter, uh, it depends on the scenario, so you know when you start the game, you will check, you will choose the scenario. Then some scenario has 13 chapters or 12 or 10 chapters, most of them have around 10 chapters. But as you can see, we could maybe even uh, shorten and just remove some of the chapters. If you don't have a lot of time to play, you can just remove some of the chapters, like in this situation so yeah actually three like you know the first one we put the entry token we started the game then we came here and we activated that chapter to the second one and then on the second one chapter we needed to sacrifice four times to go to the this missing piece chapter but for this chapter its effect is just to place the exit token one example I'm going to show you right there. If we would continue the game, we would be here, like return to base. We would return to camp. Uh, we would be at full health. We would trade with one another. It would be some kind of a intermezzo, like some kind of a delay in the game. Well, when we are going to gear up, trade with one another, heal up. And then, when we are ready, we continue with the next chapter. Um, what a disappointment you didn't die. Well, I tried, you know. I tried. I did my best to die, but the monsters were stupid in a way. And perfectly, you know, the, the loop of the soundtrack just came to the end so this is again the, the beginning so i will stop for now because uh, if i don't leave in half an hour i will be locked in the office because i'm in the building and if uh, i am locked i will need to spend the night and i don't want to spend the night here and what's the hardest monster in the game <laughs> well it really depends on the situation and as you go with the levels, then the bigger, badier monsters will join you. But the effects of the monsters are really unique. 
and you will see every card in the game. I don't say it like unique, every card is unique, like one card has plus one and the other plus two, but every monster has its own special abilities and this also applies to a card or the events. So it might be that some monster will just be the right one to kill it at that particular time. Okay, it's been a pleasure. See you. I think we will most confuse or schedule a lot of the players controlling the monsters when they die as explorers. So for next stream I suggest you show us that mechanic of the game a bit. And uh, how much time do you need to play? Well, it really depends. Uh, how much was that? It was an hour. You see, and it, in the manual it, it says that it's about an hour. It really depends on the uh, style that you're playing. Like, I could maybe spend a lot of time just gearing up, just running around, exploring new map tiles. And with that style, it can last for hours, even this quick, extra quick and short scenario. Or I could even, like for example, if that Ktoon guy didn't force me to go to this map tile, I could be even faster if I just ran towards that chapter space. So it really depends. I can't say because it depends on the context. And for that question about the player controlling the monsters, like one thing that you need to bear in mind that you really need to take care of your explorers. If they die, that's almost like a game over, like for the whole group. But in order to not give you a game over, there is that mechanic that it's like, a, okay, time is running out. If you don't win the game shortly, you will definitely going to die. So that's why this is in place. And uh, with the first edition, we had the rule that uh, you could just pick the next explorer and half of your items are destroyed. And we received many numerous complaints about that it takes too long. Like, okay, I died, and then I need to get another explorer, and that, that explorer dies, and then another. So it, it, before, it didn't have like a very written, clearly written rule, like a game over, game over condition. And a lot of people complained about that. And I agree, especially if there's a lot of explorer pool in the game. So now it's much more precise and tactical, but in the other way, it also gives, with some of the addition to the rule, cooperation aspects that you really need to play as a team. One example is using the inventory for the other player, or using the essence to achieve uh, like whatever thing you can do. Like you know that you can use the essence to increase the attack roll. So let's say that Yaki is my explorer, my guy. So I can use essence so that he can increase his attack. There's a couple of those things that really boost the cooperative aspect of the side. But the downside is that once you die, you really die. And in not in order to just sit on the table, to boost even that game over effect, you as a dead explorer then change switch sides. Okay, that's going to be it then. Thank you once more. And all the best.